Hello everyone, Killer Shrew Fan here, and I want to say thank you all so much for 1,000 subscribers. It means the world to me that you guys enjoy watching what I do, enjoy hearing what I talk about, and all of that stuff. And, you know, there's a thousand of you now, so that, that, that's just incredible to me. And thank you all so much to everyone who's been here since I started doing Dinosaur Toy Reviews, and to everyone who's just joined recently. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Now, in my last video wherein I left it up to you guys to decide what I did for 1,000 subscribers, a lot of you expressed interest in seeing a complete tour of my dinosaur toy collection. So that is exactly what we are going to do here today on Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. So, the first part of my collection I like to call the sock drawer. I call it this because it is, you know, sitting on top of the dresser that that holds my socks, but also because it's just kind of an amalgamation of dinosaurs from different brands, different years, and different species. Every dinosaur collector has a different way of organizing their collection, be that by the brand, or by the scale, or by the species, or by the era in which the dinosaur was around. Every collector has something different, and I, I like to go by brand. So these dinosaurs here are all the dinosaurs that came to me through lots, through secondhand finds, that just didn't make the cut for being on the same shelf as their other brand counterparts, so these are kind of like the B collection, the stuff that I didn't think I wanted to display on the shelves with the same dinosaur company models. Um, and I do that for a variety of reasons, either they're just too stylistically different, not enough space, too goofy, <laughs> um, or even doubles. I keep doubles over here as well, but yes, this is where I keep dinosaurs that I do not let make the cut for being on the shelf with their counterparts. But yes, there's still a lot of good stuff in here. As you can see, I have a lot of stuff to be proud of here. We've got the Carnegie Diplodocus over here, both versions, the massive Carnegie Brachiosaurus, the massive Schleich Brachiosaurus, the Carnegie Brachiosaurus, both versions. I mentioned that already. The Schleichapatosaurus, some Papo dinosaurs, the old wild safari dinosaurs. There is a lot going on on this shelf. A lot of good and a lot of dinosaurs, to be sure. Moving on over, we've got my marine reptile section of my collection, kind of a limited area. You've got the Safari Limited Chronosaurus and Carnegie Chronosaurus, the Safari Limited Liplerodon and Carnegie Ichthyosaurus, and next door to them over there, we have got the only prehistoric mammals that graced my collection, mostly Schleich, as you can see, and then a couple of Carnegie, or one Carnegie mammoth, and then a Safari Limited infant mammoth. So yeah. Yes, that is all the prehistoric mammals that I have contained in one area of my collection. Going ahead to the Terra by Batat Dan LaRusso signature collection. I apologize for that beam kind of casting a weird shadow on everything, but here you can see the complete Terra by Batat dinosaur collection from Target. All of the dinosaurs here have been accumulated, accumulated across the nation and through eBay. Down below you can see the uh, Carnegie Mysore and Dinosaurs of China. I forget that one's name, but they are also here on this shelf. So yes, the complete Terra by Batet collection is something I am proud of in my, in my own larger collection, which is fantastic. Moving on to the Hasbro section of my Jurassic collection. This is all that remains of the Hasbro offerings from the Jurassic toy line, Jurassic Park 3 and Jurassic World included. But as you can see, I held on to the better offerings from them. You've got both Indominus Rex versions there, the hybrid and original, I guess they're both hybrids, so the less hybrid, I guess, and then you got the Stegoceratops hybrid, the Carnoraptor hybrid, the Stomp and Strike, no, yeah, the Stomp and Strike Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Ceratosaurus, and then, of course, the only actual Brachiosaurus toy that we had, other than a hatchling, before Mattel got the license, that is, so once I get that Brachiosaurus, this one might be on the way out. Next up, we've got my sort of 
extra Jurassic Park or Jurassic World Mattel shelf. This is where I kind of keep extras or things that I don't really, you know, want to take up space because they're bigger, you know, like you can see in the back there, the quest for the Indominus Rex set, the Lava Surge play set, and then of course all the minis, and then the Roarvors I just got, picked up some extras that were on, you know, dirt cheap clearance for like, you know, three bucks or something each, so, I, you know, I decided to just nab those up since they were so darn cheap. Extra Thrash and Throw, extra Extreme Chomp and Spinosaurus in the back there, and then of course we've got some Jurassic memorabilia, the Dr. Pepper, the Doritos, all that stuff. So yes, this is just kind of a few extra Jurassic items before we get to the big event, which is of course my Kenner shelves. Forgive the fuzziness of some of these images, I am filming in low light areas, which my phone does not like, but here you can see my carnivore Kenner dinosaurs on the top shelf there, along with the Playmates, Vastasaurus, Rex, and Hasbro Spinosaurus at the top there. I guess that's the one other Hasbro thing that I have. But yes, awesome, awesome toys from Kenner back in the day that I am very happy to call my own. I didn't grow up with these, but I can certainly see why so many people love them as much as they do. You can see we've got the Kenner Demon Carnotaurus, Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex, a couple Red Rexes, the Young Rexes, three versions of those, the Firebeak Quetzalcoatlus, a lot of good stuff on this shelf. A lot to take in and a lot to enjoy. Down below, I've got the Herbivorous Kenner offerings, the Pachycephalosaurs, the Stegosaurs, the Triceratops, Parasaurolophus, Gallimimus, Chasmosaurus, those sort of things. A lot less extensive than the carnivore offerings. But then below that, I have be I get you get into my Mattel Jurassic World offerings. And here you can see I've organized them by the movie. Here is the original Jurassic Park shelf containing dinosaurs that were both seen in the films, mentioned in the book, or seen in some extra, you know promotional stuff for the original films like the maps, the video games, what have you. All of that is contained here on this shelf. A lot of Gallimimus there. You can see my Gallimimus flock. I've got the different versions of the Dilo. The, um, well, <laughs> that's really all there is to talk about on that shelf. Moving down below, We've got some more Mattel stuff. These are like the multi-figure packs with the Legacy Collection and then the Owen pack with the Velociraptor and the Gallimimus. Couple Dimorphodons roosting up on that. Forgive the glare on that. I know it's kind of hard to make out, but you know, like I said, the lighting in these environments is kind of funky. Here you can see more Kenner items. These are like the ancient reptiles type things like the Estaminosuchus, Lysinops, and Scutosaurus there. There is all of those ones from the Kenner line. I mean, I don't have all of them. I'm sure there are repaints that I'm missing, but yeah, that's a good majority of what they did for their ancient reptiles. Below that shelf, we have got the Lost World themed shelf. So there you can see we got all the dinosaurs that were present in the Lost World books, movies, and video games, including the Rex family, Parasaurolophus, Stegosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, the Moosaurus showed up in the books, the Albertosaurus showed up in the video games. Lots of awesome figures from Mattel, and I think it's really fun that I can take what they have given us and, you know, neatly sort it into instantly recognizable shelves. Like, you can look at a shelf and say, oh, that's a Lost World, or oh, that's Jurassic Park. And then, of course, below that, we have Fallen Kingdom with our three Indoraptors, the Grab and Growl Superposable and Basic, the Carnotaurus, Pachyrhinosaurus, Sinoceratops, Concavenator, Allosaurus, Herd of Stiggy Molochs, Draco Rex, and, of course, the Indominus Rex Skeleton. Yes, all of these were seen in the um, Fallen Kingdom film, and I think it's, again, cool that Mattel have made it so easy for me to organize these by film. The Jurassic Park 3 shelf is a bit limited, which is why I moved it up onto the TV stand here. As you can see, we've got the T-Rex, the Extreme Tromp and Spinosaurus, the Pteranodon, Ceratosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. I know the Suchomimus is kind of an interloper, but they mentioned it in the film, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up on my Jurassic Park 3 shelf. And then for my Jurassic World shelf, first and foremost, we've got the Raptor Squad featuring Blue, Echo, Charlie, and Delta. No, I do not acknowledge the Mustard Attack Pack Raptor as Delta, so 
instead we've got a leaping green raptor standing in as Charlie. I think the Charlie attack pack looks more like Delta anyway. Then of course we've got the incredible Indominus Rex standing next to the Mosasaurus attacking a Pteranodon, and then of course the super colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex rearing above them all because that's the real star of Jurassic World in my humblest of opinions. Moving on, we've kind of got another sort of miscellaneous shelf here. These just these are just new in box dinosaurs that I never opened. The Sukumimus bite and fight. Here we've got the uh, Battle at Big Rock, Nasutoceratops, and Allosaurus, as you can see beneath that. Again, another pack containing the Bull and Juvenile Rex, and then of course the Grab and Growl. Indoraptor sitting up there with them. I've also got a six foot raptor skeleton standing in the corner of the living room as you can see. Yeah, Walmart had them on sale so I figured why not. Speaking of sales, here you can see the five pack that was an exclusive to Target. I waited till I could get that one at a discount and I gotta say I'm glad that I did. Just a bunch of repaints, didn't really justify the $50 price tag, but once it went cheaper, I went for it. Here you can see the two packs, Dilophosaurus and Dimorphodon, along with the Velociraptor and Gallimimus. Still looking for blue and Dimorphodon pack. The Baryonyx is the only Roarvor repaint that I added to my collection. Here are the human sections of my collection. We had Wheatley, Claire, Maisie. Here is a T-Rex that holds your keys. Beneath, beneath that we've got Zia, Mercenary, Battle at Lockwood Estate, Owen, Ian Malcolm. Robert Muldoon, Dr. Alan Grant, and Dr. Ellie Sattler. Here we have a couple of random Roarivores that didn't quite fit on the wall with their um, Roarivore friends. Above my T-Rex poster, you can see all the other Roarivores. We've got Wave 1 in the top there with the Baryonyx, Metriacanthosaurus, and Triceratops. Those were my three favorites from that wave, that's why they won out over the Allosaurus, and then we've got the Ceratosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Pteranodon beneath them, and next door we have the attack packs from across the different waves. At, to at the top you can see the newest ones, and at the bottom you can see some of Dino Rivals, and sprinkled throughout are also wave ones to ones waves 1, 2, 3, and 3 from the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom lineup by Mattel. So here's just kind of another Jurassic World Mattel corner of my collection. And then you can see eking into that some more dinosaurs from different companies and brands. But before we get to those, we have to finish up the Jurassic World stuff. Here you can see all of the uh, dual attack dinosaurs from the Dino Rivals uh, lineup. The Nasutoceratops, Allosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Pteranodon, two Concavenators, and of course beneath that, the Triceratops right down there. And next to the Triceratops, we've got the Legacy Story Packs. I had to pay a pretty penny to import those. Another Hasbro Jurassic World holdover, my repaint of the Pachycephalosaurus. The Legacy Collections and Battle Damage Dinosaurs, along with the Savage Strike Dino Rivals, uh, Mattel figures, and then more Battle Damage and Legacy at the bottom there, as you can see. This is another Jurassic World corner of my room, but this is probably the most impressive area right here. This is kind of where I keep the bigger, more impressive stuff. On the bottom, though, is the smaller, less impressive stuff with the most of the minis, blind bag minis, and then we've got all of our opened human figures in the corner there. Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, Ian Malcolm, really a lot of the same stuff you saw in the corner. Then in the back there you can see our Destructosaurs with the Velociraptor, Dilophosaurus, and T-Rex ambush set. Here's a battle damage Velociraptor. Next door neighbors are the Extreme Chomping Tyrannosaurus Rex and an inbox Extreme Chomping Spinosaurus. One of three Extreme Chomping Spinosaurus that I am lucky enough to own. The ATV set, more battle damage dinosaurs, and the Stegosaurus, another inbox one that I got on clearance. Here you can see the two Indoraptors, the Superposable and Lockward Battle Estate. <laughs> Lockwood Estate Battle Damage Indoraptor, and beneath that you've got the Super Colossal Tyrannosaurus Rex in box and the Mosasaurus in box. The top features the Battle Damage Albertosaurus, Action Attack Carnotaurus, and Story Pack Stiggy Moloch, and all of that is kept under the watchful eye of Tiny there. Hi Tiny! 
Here you can see one of the slime kits I got while I was up in Canada, and then we've got more Jurassic memorabilia with the Doritos bags bearing the Im images of the Jurassic World dinosaurs. One of the few inbox Kenner items I have, a Lysenops, and really, that's almost it for my Kenner offering, save for the new inbox Utah Raptor, one of the crowning achievements of my collection. Moving on to the Schleich collection, here you can see all of these sort of old-timey Schleich figures on my top shelf. Items of note include the beautiful sauropods, the saltosaurus, apatosaurus, both apatosaurus, I'm sorry, the smaller orange version and the larger blue-gray version, and then of course some of my rarest Schleich, fig rarest Schleich figures, the Dem Desmastosuchus and Iguanodon. Next up, we have got the Carnotaurus uh, Schleich figure and Retro Allosaurus Schleich figure. Behind them, you've got the Edmontosaurus, the Taurosaurus, the Baryonyx, the Big Al Allosaurus, Corythosaurus, and hiding down here next to the uh, Baryonyx, the Edmontonia, beautiful little figure. Here's more of my modern Schleich collection with the two Carnotaurus, Pentaceratops, Kentrosaurus, and Oviraptor. Then you've got the large Ichthyosaurus type dino or marine reptile. I'm not entirely sure what that one's called. And then, of course, the glorious Schleich Ceratosaurus. Oh my god, kill me now. <laughs> Still can't take that figure seriously. But moving on, we have got my Carnage Resaurus dinosaurs. I've got three of those. The Stegosaurus, Giganotosaurus, and Styracosaurus. The Styracosaurus is a holdover from my childhood. I've had that dinosaur most of my life, actually. Here you can see the Toyway uh, uh, Torosaurus from the Walking with Dinosaurs series and the Bullyland Therizinosaurus. Beneath them, we have my limited collector shelf with the Dimorphodon, Carcharodontosaurus, Eniosaurus, and Therizinosaurus, a fairly recent acquisition and addition to my collection. And then we've got my only other bully land uh, item hanging out with them, this sort of amphibious creature. I forget its name, but to my knowledge, that's a gem. So he is part of my collection, and I am ha happy to have him. Here you can see my Rebore dinosaurs next to the Giganotosaurus by Eofauna, an awesome dinosaur that I highly recommend. And I kind of gave a quick look at those... Um, Rebor, at that Rebor dinosaur, but next to that we do have the Rebor Warpig Ankylosaurus uh, modeling the hand-painted Carnotaurus that was stenciled onto a chip of an actual dinosaur bone. I believe it was some sort of hadrosaur piece, but I could be wrong in that. But that's what I was told by the person who gifted that to me. Above all that, we've got our Vitae shelf with the new recruits from yesterday, the Giganotosaurus from years, a couple years ago when I got them, and then of course all the newbies that came to me in the mail just yesterday that I did an unboxing video for. But yes, awesome, awesome company, and I'm really glad I get to see all of them together on one shelf. It looks gorgeous. Here we've got my sauropod collection, all br different brands, all different species, but you know, I like to keep sauropods together because I find them to be quite impressive animals and I think they all display beautifully together. Just something about all those long necks that look fantastic. Here you can see the PNSO U... Euclopus, I believe, the Carnegie Brachiosaurus a second time, the Carnegie Camarasaurus, Safari Limited Malawisaurus, uh, Safari Limited Apatosaurus, the modern Safari Camarasaurus, the Amargosaurus again, and then the Carnegie Diplodocus a second time. Way in the back there, you've got the Mementisaurus, which was an older model, but is still quite impressive in terms of its overall size. And then, of course, the beautiful Papo Brachiosaurus right there in the center. Beneath the sauropods is my Carnivorous Safari Limited collection. You can see everything here from the classic um, Utyrannus to the new Carnotaurus. We've also got the Giganotosaurus, Spinosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm a very big fan of this Carnotaurus, despite how furry the image is, there it is, and despite how thick the thing is, I am quite a fan of that model. And then, of course, all of these other fantastically sculpted, beautiful little figures make wonderful additions to the collection as well. 
Beneath that shelf, we have the Carnegie shelf. So this is just all of my favorite Carnegie models. You've got the Giganotosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Telosaurus, the Concavenator twins, the Cryolophosaurus twins, the Oviraptors, Velociraptors, Miragaya, Amargosaurus, Carnotaurus, that is still my favorite Carnotaurus model on the market to date. And then of course in the back there, Camera Shy, Spinosaurus. I am a big fan of this shelf. It just feels so retro, but so complete. And so I, I just feel like the colors in the Carnegie lineup were more bold and more eye-catching than anything that Safari Limited does these days. It's just something, there's an appeal to these models that I think the newer Safari Limited toys are missing. Can't put my finger on it, but I do prefer this shelf to this shelf above it. There's a better look at that camera shy Spinosaurus. Next up, the Batat shelf of Killer Shrew Fans collection. Batat is easily one of the most collectible and sought after toy lines in the dinosaur toy community, which is why I'm so incredibly proud of all of the figures that I have in my collection by Batat. As you can see, we've got a good chunk of them. There's still a good handful missing, but this I'm still impressed by how many I've been able to track down at decent prices. So yes, Batat out of the way. Moving on, we've got a sort of mixed bag shelf. We've got some mostly Safari Limited herbivorous dinosaurs there, but then we've also got a couple PNSO models, the amazing Chunkingosaurus and the Spinops down below, as you can see. But yes, this is kind of a high-class shelf with some very, very good models, and it's massive like the 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 size of this shelf it's one of the first ones that you see when you walk into the room simply because of that massive pnso chunkingosaurus and then all of the little minion dinosaurs surrounding it and finally we move on to my papo collection papo is easily my favorite brand of dinosaurs there's my good little buddy swede hanging out with us and there are all of the Papo dinosaur models in my collection. Um, yeah, like I said, easily my favorite brand and easily the one that I have spent probably the most time hunting. They're, they were the first, the Carnotaurus was the first dinosaur toy, or excuse me, model in my collection. And that one is what set the ball in motion. So I really owe all of this to Papo. Well, Maybe I don't owe all of it. Maybe I can blame all of it on Papo. That sounds a bit better. Papo's dinosaur models are beautiful. Every single one of them impresses me. I am so incredibly grateful to be able to own as many of these as I do. They are all just so incredibly gorgeous, and they're all very important to me. They're all, they're all so special they each have their own story of when and how i got them but yeah that's gonna do it for us everything you see here is every dinosaur toy in killer shrew fans killer toy collection we've got papo we've got Catlecta, we've got schleich we've got vite we got pnso we got mattel we got hasbro and we got kenner so many incredible companies, each with their own unique take on some of the most amazing creatures that ever walked the earth. I'm so glad I have something in my life that I am this passionate about, and I'm so glad that now I have a small community that I can share it with. As always, I hope you enjoyed our video today. If you saw a dinosaur in there that you want us to take a closer look at, by all means, shout it out down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed seeing all this plastic goodness, don't be afraid to let us know and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe on the way out for more killer content from Killer Shrew Fan. Alright, that's gonna do it for us today. Killer Shrew Fan, out.